Hello guys, welcome back to another day. We're gonna be talking about our Tam Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky, and where both might be going in this offseason. Now, Blue Jackets teammates are Tim Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky are in for some big paydays in this NHL offseason. But where will they end up signing in free agency? Watch till the end to find out. Now we'll start this video with Artem Panarin, arguably the guy that is a little bit less obvious on who he'll sign with this offseason. Now he is, of course, Russian-born player, age 27, left winger. He had a fantastic season with the Columbus Blue Jackets this season, getting 79 games, getting 28 goals, 59 assists for 87 points. And when it comes to Artem Panarin, wherever he goes, he'll get paid, and that's pretty much a guarantee. Now, the first team that might sign with Artemi Panarin this offseason is the Columbus Blue Jackets, and it might seem unlikely that it actually does happen, but I would say Panarin has a much bigger chance in re-signing with Columbus compared to Sergio Orozki. I don't think it will happen, but it definitely is possible. Now, amidst all the rumors and speculation that we've seen so far this season and going into the offseason, I still think the connection between Columbus and Panarin is still somewhat alive. While I don't think it is very likely that Panarin does end up signing in Columbus, let's say he doesn't get uh, money that he wants in other teams or with other offers, he could be going back to Columbus, I think, pretty mutually. And Columbus has a lot, a lot of cap space this season, with obviously Panarin, Bobrovsky, Duchesne coming off the books. They'll have a lot of cap space. They didn't need to re-sign a guy like Zach Gorensky, but when it comes to connection there, I still think it can happen, even if it is unlikely. Now, Columbus has $32 million in cap space this offseason, which is a lot to work with. After they reset a guy like Zach Renski, it's probably going to be around $25 million. But Columbus has money to spare, and I think they will use it. Whether it's a guy, a guy like Panarin or somebody else, they will use the cap space. Now, when it comes to potential Panarin to Columbus contract, I would say Columbus does give up a boatload for him. I would say they pay him at least $11 million to stay in Columbus. I would say for Panarin, Panarin, probably six or seven years. I'd probably say seven years on that one. So when it comes to Panarin again, he would want a big payday, and especially to go back to Columbus, it would have to be a lot. Now, the next team that could be in on Artemi Panarin is the Florida Panthers. And this is a much bigger deal and a much better bet than I would say the Columbus Blue Jackets, especially the Florida Panthers and the direction right now. Of course, they just hired Joel Quinville as the coach, which means that they are willing to spend some money to make the team better. And that is a huge thing because Florida obviously has been on the Sergio Borowski sweepstakes. I think they can be on the Artemi Panarin sweepstakes, and that would definitely boost their already fantastic top six. When it comes to the Florida Panthers, they have $21 million in cap space this summer, which is more than enough to negotiate with a guy like Artemi Panarin. Now, they don't have a lot of big guys coming off the books either, so they'll likely may, maybe sign a couple of depth guys as well. Maybe it goes down to $18 million or something, but they'll have the money to sign a guy like Artemi Panarin for sure, and the fit is definitely there. We've seen them leak quite a few times, and they do have the cap space, so I do think it can work. I'm just looking at a potential top six featuring Panarin on Florida. You've got Barkov, Danov, Hoffman, Trocek, Huberdeau already on that top six. And adding freaking the bread man to that top six would just be absolutely disgusting. Now, when it comes to potential contract that can make that top six work, I would probably say Panarin goes for $10.5 million for seven years. While Florida obviously has that Florida factor and it's a great place to live and stay, no state taxes and everything, I still think Panarin would want a lot of money even with that. I still think that Panarin would want that bunch of money, and I think Florida is the type of team to give it to him. Now for the final and probably most likely destination for our team Panarin, I got the New York Rangers. Their team has a ton of cap space and a ton of money that they want to spend. And adding a guy like our team Panarin to that already solid up and coming core would just be absolutely lethal and would honestly be a great fit. Now, NYR has exactly $19 million in cap space. They don't have too many guys to re-sign either, so it could be a decent fit there. And when it comes to Artemi Panarin, I think he'll be a great fit in NYR. Going on that first line of Artemi Panarin, the bread man, with Mika Zibanejad and Capo Caco, that is pretty much my ideal line when it comes to my personal favorite players. That would be absolutely fantastic. And adding a guy like Panarin to that pre-salt offense already would be fantastic for the now and for the future, in my opinion. Not to mention that NYR is also building a pretty solid Russian machine already with guys like Vitaly Kratsov, Alexander Georgiev, and Rykov. Adding a guy like Artemi Panarin, the bread man to that team, would complete the Russian core. And for me personally, again, adding a guy to that offensive impact like Panarin would go a long ways to making NYR maybe a playoff contender as soon as next season. 
when it comes to the New York Rangers, they would probably have to give up the most money out of any of the three teams I mentioned to get Artemi Panarin on the New York Rangers. While it's already a great fit there and he's already had interest in coming to New York, I still think that I would give up a buttload of money to make it happen. Now, when it comes to the potential contract, I would say he gets $11 million exactly on the dot for seven years. And I think that's a very good deal for a guy, again, like Artemi Panarin's skill set. I think he'll bring a lot to the New York Rangers. will be a solid fit on that wing core. And again, having those years, he'll do a lot there and could be a big part of a potential Stanley Cup contender in just a few years in New York. Now we're going to move on to Sergey Bobrovsky and his whole situation. And while it might seem that there's one obvious team that he'll sign with, I think it's a lot more of an even playing field than people might give it credit for. Now, Sergei Bobrovsky had an up and down season, even though him and the Columbus Blue Jackets made the second round of the playoffs, which wasn't done before in their franchise history, Bobrovsky really didn't have too big of a part of it. He was pretty average, I would say, for most of that season, and only really stepped it up until the playoffs. So with Sergei Bobrovsky, I would say his stock kind of dropped a little bit because of the season, but I still think he's definitely going to get paid, and a lot of teams should be interested. Now, the first team that might be pursuing Sergei Bobrovsky this offseason, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I can't even say that with a straight face because, yeah, if you guessed it already, it's not happening. Now, for the first actual team that'll go after Sergei Bobrovsky, I got the Calgary Flames. And they're a team that desperately, desperately needs goalie help. Even though it improved this season with Dave Rich and Mike Smith, it still is not where it needs to be. And Calgary obviously needs that long-term option, which Sergei Bobrovsky can be and will be with the Calgary Flames. Now, Sergei Bobrovsky seems like a perfect fit for the Calgary Flames. And he kind of is. But then you have to factor in the cap space, which doesn't really favor it too much. They do have $14 million in cap space, which seems decent on paper, but they also got to sign Matthew Kachuk and Sam Bennett this offseason, so it's not exactly like they have nobody to sign, and they can just give away that $14 million in cap space, because they really can't. But for the Calgary Flames, there are some good news, because there's a couple of guys that have one year left that are pretty expendable, and I think teams would definitely value Two guys that think Calgary can definitely trade this offseason to free up cap space are Michael Folik and TJ Brody. Two guys that haven't really fit in too well with the Calgary Flames, at least in the last couple of years, that could be expendable. Obviously, we'd love to trade a guy like James Neal, but I'm not sure if he actually has any value on the market, especially with how he played this past season. But I feel like TJ Brody and Folik have good enough value to where you can trade them and get something back. Maybe it's a couple of picks or something. But both players have one year left and are pretty expendable. That frees up about $9 million in cap space, which then alone could set a guy like Sergio Roski. Now, Calgary, unfortunately, might not be able to afford him as some other teams might be able to, but if Sergio Roski does take a pay cut, I think it can work in the long run. When it comes to if he signs to the Calgary Flames, I say it's for $9 million, which I think is about as much as they can afford for eight years. Give him a couple more years than some other teams are willingly able to offer him, and I think that might work. Again, the years over the uh, overall salary might be a good enticement for Sergio Roski, and we know Calgary is already a good team on paper, and if they get a guy like Sergio Roski, could be a team that goes to the second round as soon as next season. The next team that I think could be in on the Sergio Bobrovsky sweepstakes is the Carolina Hurricanes. And of course, they had an amazing season last season, making the NHL playoffs and getting to the Eastern Conference Final. Very successful, but they could be a team that is in on Sergio Bobrovsky, and I think they should, as the goaltending likely isn't going to last forever. Now, Carolina, with the big success they had this past season, a lot of it was due to the goaltending and how it stepped up. Guys like Peter Morazic, guys like Curtis McElhinney, those are the two guys that stepped up big time for the Carolina Hurricanes were one of the main reasons why they made the playoffs in the first place. And that's fantastic. But for the Carolina Hurricanes, I don't know how much you want to bet on those two guys replicating what they did last season. While Peter Mrazek had a couple of good stints in Detroit, this is really an outlier for his career, and especially for Curtis McElhinney, who played a lot more games than he's used to, especially in the NHL level, and played fantastic in them. While I would love for Carolina to have those cheap goaltenders and for them to always do well, I don't know if that's always going to happen, but a guy like Sergio Bobrovsky is pretty much a sure bet, especially when healthy. Now we saw how big the success was for Carolina as they had a ton of new fans. Next season, they have a lot of new season ticket holders. So they'll have a lot more revenue coming through the franchise and it'll definitely help them, I think, in free agency to go after a couple of new guys as well. Whether it's Sergio Bobrovsky or a couple of other guys, I expect Carolina to be pretty active in free agency. And a guy like Sergio Bobrovsky, I think, would be a great fit for the goal problem that they're likely going to have if they don't sign him. 
Now, a good thing with Carolina's chances is that they have a lot of cap space this summer. They have $28 million in cap space. While they got to sign a guy like Sebastian Ajo, there still is enough money to go around to sign a guy like Sergio Bobrovsky, which will be huge for them. When it comes to Carolina, if they want to go after some big guys like Sergio Bobrovsky, I think they can. If they do sign a guy like Sergio Bobrovsky, I think the contract will be $9.5 million for six years. And I'm not sure if Carolina is going to give up as many years as a team like Calgary. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think they will give up the money. Just $0.5 more than Calgary would give up. When it comes to Carolina Hurricanes, I think they would be in on Sergio Roski and should be one of the teams right to the very end. Now, the most likely team and the most obvious team to sign Sergio Bobrovsky, I got the Florida Panthers. And the Florida Panthers haven't linked to Sergio Bobrovsky for what seems like months now. Pretty much in the past year, we've seen Florida go after Sergio Bobrovsky, whether it be through trades and signings. And when it comes to this offseason, I think it'll finally happen and Sergio Bobrovsky will be a Florida Panther. One of the main things that signaled this to me was, again, the Joel Quinville signing, where they gave up a lot of money to get a good quality head coach. And I feel like with the owners, they won't really skip a beat in this offseason. I feel like they'll want to go after some big guys in free agency, and Sergio Robrowski is one of those big guys. And they could trade a guy like James Reimer or Roberto Luongo if they can to free up some money. But I feel like Sergio Robrowski will be a Florida Panther at some point. Whether it's after those trades or not, I think it will happen, and Florida will go up a ton of money to make sure it happens. And again, with Sergio Dabrowski, I think the fit is there in Florida. They need a quality goaltender that they haven't had in a long, long time. And I feel like they're willing to give that up, willing to give up the cap space to make that happen. When it comes to the potential contract, I think they give up the most of any team offering a $10 million contract for seven years. And that's a contract that Sergio Dabrowski would want. Being in the double digits, he'd be the highest paid goaltender besides a carry price, obviously. And that would obviously be a great contract for Sergio Dabrowski to get. So I think it can work, and obviously, when it comes to the Artemi Panarin and Sergio Bobrovsky angle, when it comes to the whole situation, unless Florida gives up some obvious cap hit like guys like Lovango or Reimer, I'm not sure if they'll be able to afford both Artemi Panarin and Sergio Bobrovsky, but I'm willing to bet I would say Sergio Bobrovsky is the guy they're going for the most, and it does make sense since Sergio Bobrovsky is their big need and the goaltending is the thing they want to fix. But of course, with this video, I want to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments down below. So, let me know what you think about the Artemi Panarin and Sergio Bobrovsky situations, and where do you see them going in free agency, and what contracts do you see them signing? But, if you guys want some more grab videos just like this one, you can click on this card right here to watch my video with Eric Carlson and where he might go in free agency. But, that'll be it for today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on Tony Panera and Sergio Dabrowski and where both might be going in this offseason. I'll see you guys next video or stream. Goodbye.